Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today for our fiscal year end in SAP by Design webinar with your host, Alex Waddell. My name is Catherine, and I'll be facilitating today. Of course, we always record these sessions, so everyone will remain on mute, and then we'll, rec we'll send out that recording in the email in a few days. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them into the questions or chat box windows at any time, and we'll, we'll try to answer them towards the end of this presentation. And then please don't forget to join us for next week's Q&A Cafe. Uh, that's going to be on Wednesday, March the 17th. Uh, that is going to be on product development, product engineering, and product designs in SAP Business by Design. Um, you can find registration information about that on our resources page, on our website, or of course in that email that we send out. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Alex. Great. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Welcome, everyone. So, yes, uh, financial year-end close, fiscal year-end close. Uh, today is March 10th, so uh, maybe for some of you this is just in time, maybe it's a little too late, um, but you may not have even got thought about closing your year-end yet, especially if it's calendar year, so hopefully we're just in time. So, uh, very little PowerPoint, you're welcome. We're just going to look at, uh, like, one slide to talk about uh, some of the elements of financial close, and we'll just dive right into the system. So obviously, what's the purpose of the financial close? It's to close your fiscal year to any further entries, uh, roll your profit and loss to retained earnings. That's the ultimate thing. There's a few events that are happening uh, in between that, and we'll talk about that in this session. So some prerequisites, uh, you'll have to have a new fiscal year created. Uh, obviously, if you're closing 2020, you've probably done that uh, quite a number of months ago. Uh, there's a prerequisite around having certain GL accounts. If you've done this before, those accounts are still there. They're probably still linked in the GL determinations. Uh, if this is the first time you're doing, um, I'll show you where to go in and check for that. And uh, before we actually run the close, I mean, this is really just business process. Uh, all accounts, you know, so your entire balance sheet, you're going to obviously want to make sure everything is reconciled and all your manu manual vouchers are completed in the system. And then lastly, all your subledger clearing jobs are completed for the final period, meaning uh, your WIP clearing, your GRI are clearing, your fixed asset depreciation, um, and so forth, depending, depending which of those modules you're using. And then the actual steps to closing themselves is it's a two-step process. So there's a balance, there's a step one, which is a balance carry forward to closing, opening, and balance accounts. Uh, I'll show you those journal entries that get created. And then you run it in a step two mode to close out those accounts to your retained earnings in the new year. So with that, let's just dive in. So as I mentioned, for those prerequisites, uh, well, actually, let's talk about the fiscal year first of all. So when you're in your um, general ledger work center, if you go to your set of books, you can see, and you will have fiscal close for every intersection of set of books and company so those are potentially different well they are different journal entries so you're going to be running it for all of these combinations when you run the jobs and for your edit fiscal years you can go in here and actually let's choose a different company so the company that you're highlighted on is the relevant one uh, actually i'm going to look for my innovat because i did a test in there earlier so let's look at this one for us gap so you can see here that all of the fiscal years from 2010 to 2017, the carry forward, so the retained earnings roll has happened. The periods are blocked. Uh, 2018, the carry forward has happened, but we haven't gone in to actually just do the last step to close the calendar. And then 2019, we've never bothered closing, uh, nor 2020. So this is my demo environment, pretty lazy about closing some of these companies, not a lot of transactions going through them anyway. Uh, but you may be wondering, uh, but you, you are obviously not prevented from continuing your business with your periods still being open. So you can, you may notice if you run your income statement, you will get a warning bar at the bottom telling you that the 20 or 2020 carry forward has not been completed. But for all intents and purposes, your income statement still works. It shows your profit period properly and things like that on it. So not really an issue. You don't need to rush this process. 
So typically it is going to take you a few months, obviously, to get your fiscal year uh, finalized. And if you are creating a new fiscal year, it's simple as clicking this button and uh, it's not going to let me because I've got multiple years still open. So I'm getting this, this error bar. But when you click that, it just adds another row to the screen and you've simply got a new fiscal year created in the system. It's as simple as that. Once you've created your fiscal year, you can then go into the calendar and uh, you can you can you know manipulate your periods like you normally would with your closing steps, et cetera. Okay, let's go have a look at the GL determinations that are required. So I'm gonna go into the business configuration. You would have to be an administrator to have access to this. So this is behind the scenes uh, configuration. And if you are using the SAP out of the box chart of accounts, uh, or even if you're using your own, quite likely this was already configured for you when your system was created. But if you don't have this, you will get an error. So you would have to correct this problem before you go any further. So I'm just gonna go specifically into the activity for your chart of accounts. First, we're gonna pop into the actual chart of accounts screen. And obviously, um, this is outside of your retained earnings. So this, these accounts go into the nines and these are specific accounts that are utilized by the system uh, for loading your initial balances in the system. So you may see a blank uh, uh, bank of accounts here that you will never use again once you've, once you've brought in your balances into the system. But every year you will need to reuse these accounts, which are your closing, your opening balance account and an income summary account. So those will be set to opening and closing balances. They only need to be set for automatic postings. You won't do any manual journal entries into those. And when those are created, so once again, if this is the out of the box chart of accounts, which is what we're looking at in this case, those accounts are already sitting there. And as well, the GL determinations would already be configured. So when we go into the GL determinations, the category for income summary, that's your income summary account. You could hover over the little question mark here and you can, um, uh, you can get some more detail. If you go to the, um, pardon me, opening and closing balances, those are where those other two accounts. So your closing entries in period 12 will temporarily go into this account. And then uh, on January 1st, assuming I'm assuming here that your fiscal year is your calendar year, will um, roll into this account. And you could probably use the same account for both. This is really just a temporary transaction. So if you are setting this up yourself, um, that's kind of a personal decision. So before I dive right in there, maybe I will just spend a moment uh, talking about the closing cockpit. I don't necessarily want to go into too much detail. We could probably have a whole cafe on this functionality, but your closing cockpit um, will include, you know, in your period 12, your final uh, closing activities as well. I have created one here. So if I go into the 2020, so your closing cockpit is optional. It doesn't, um, it doesn't specifically run the job, but it's more of a to-do list, a reminder list, and it can shortcut you to some of the jobs. So when you set up a closing cockpit in the system, uh, out of the box by design has a whole bunch of tasks. They try and put them in order of dependency. In some cases, they may indicate if there is a prerequisite here, whether or not it's been fulfilled, but it's as simple as checking off the task once it's done. So the nice thing about this closing cockpit, if you use it well, if you have a large organization, you're a controller and you have multiple accountants that are responsible for different areas, you can assign specific processors to that task. So for example, to do the withholding tax return, to do certain adjusting entries, and when they've completed the task and they flag it as completed, you will then see your progress bar as your month end gets finished um, for that company and that set of books. So you would have a separate cockpit for each one. On this dashboard, you would kind of have an idea of you know, where you're managing to getting your clothes done. If we go back into that cockpit, 
Uh, this is also completely customizable. So you can remove tasks that don't pertain to your business. You can reprioritize tasks and you can also insert manual activities. So this is useful just as a reminder, as part of your month end cockpit, you may not, you won't have the ability to insert a manual activity that drives to a specific part of the system, but the activity could just be a reminder. So something, perhaps it's something outside of the system, like for example, you know, print the financial statements and create the binders or whatever it is that you need to remember to do by a certain uh, date and you want to include that in, feel free to add those activities, order them as you want, monitor the progress. And so for some of these tasks, like closed accounting, operational postings, while you can get to every one of these activities uh, through, the through one of the work centers, oftentimes they do have an execute shortcut that will also take you to that screen. So this will, for example, take me to my open and closing periods. And now we have, um, we can view our calendar and we can actually see period 12. And we are gonna wanna make sure that we've got this period status set in a proper way that we can get all of our closing entries. So that's the widest uh, step in the calendar period. Uh, one other thing, so with this, closing cockpit. Some of these tasks um, are, are not meaningful for you. So as, as you mentioned, you could remove them. If we go to page two, so there's a bit of an overflow. Uh, those are the ones relating to printing out your reporting. So here's where we get to the balance carry forward. So that's the job that we're going to focus on running uh, in today's cafe uh, to actually do your retained earnings role. So Presumably in our scenario, we've gone through, we've done everything else, we have run all of our jobs. And when I speak about jobs, jobs that you probably are all familiar with are GRIR clearing. So that's to close out your three-way match on your goods receipts and your invoicing. Uh, you can run that job on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, but you're gonna wanna make sure you run it one final time. Your fixed asset depreciation. So if you are using fixed assets in the system, there is a link here to fixed asset depreciation. You can also, of course, go to the work center and go to periodic tasks and you can just do it yourself. And you will get an error in the system if it sees that some of these jobs have not been done. So depreciation is an example of one where the system will say, I can't run your closing entries because I see that depreciation for, you know, period 12 has not been completed yet. And then other tasks that you may or may not have, um, potentially whip clearing, if you're a manufacturing company, you're gonna need to run that job. Uh, you may have material cost roll-up jobs if you're in manufacturing, depending on what kind of cost costing method you're, you're using, uh, or you may have FIFO, so you may have some jobs there that need to be run as part of your month end. So I'm assuming you're all familiar with that. That's just your standard month end jobs. All of those would have to be run. And then the last one you're always running if you are operating in multiple currencies, either multiple countries, or you have payables, receivables, or cash um, in a different currency, and that's called the remeasurement. So foreign currency remeasurement, uh, receivables, payables. So that's gonna revalue those foreign denominated accounts or your foreign denominated ledger from your uh, default set of books uh, to your standard currency. So you're going to have to rerun those. And typically this is the last thing you would do before you would do your balances. Um, so uh, you would get an error if the system sees that something else has not been done when you try and run those jobs. So all of those dependencies are pretty much implied in the order of the cockpit. Uh, so feel free to use that feature if you haven't. And once again, if you're interested in learning more, do a little shout out. Um, we could probably talk about that in future sessions. Moving along, let's run that closing balance and see what it looks like. So this lives in your general ledger work center. Uh, I'm going to shortcut to it directly through the work center rather than going through my cockpit, but it gets me to the same place. So I'm going to launch my periodic tasks balance carry forward. I pretty got much have everything primed. I'm not letting people enter into the system. I've run all my jobs and now I wanna have um, a specific run. So I'm gonna do a new carry forward job. I'm gonna do my company 1000. So that's my Almica.
year end 2020. And I strongly recommend you run this in test mode first. So running it in test mode, it will generate any errors. Like for example, if your fixed asset depreciation hasn't been completed, you'll see that error even if you try and run it in test mode. I'm gonna be bold and run it in production because I did run a test yesterday and it worked. So we'll hopefully have success today when I run it in production. Let's see, actually closing uh, the 2019 books. So this will take a few minutes to run. Uh, when it does, it's gonna give us a log file so we can go in and we can explore uh, what's happened. So good news, I get the error or the message at the bottom that it's without error. And I can immediately go into the log here. Although because this isn't a test run, my journal entries have already been created. So I could also just go directly to uh, the journal entries. You'll notice that I did not indicate a set of books, meaning that I was just doing my, all of my sets of books at the same time for that company. Once again, that's optional. You could close each books uh, as a separate job, totally up to you. So we're gonna go into our US GAAP. Um, and we're gonna see that the system has you know, kind of some information on the general tab at a summary level of all the different things that it did. So the number of accounts that have been touched, uh, the total you know, net effect of that change. And uh, here's the data selection. So this just reaffirms what we chose. So if you don't remember which company you ran or set of books, you can go there. If you did get any messages, this is where you would go to see those messages, potentially error messages like that you have not run a prerequisite. And then finally, if we go to the postings, then we're gonna see, and it's gonna show us all of your accounts and then all of the accounts that kind of got touched. So it breaks this into a few different phases, your closing balance sheet, your opening balance sheet, your P&L, and then ultimately what you care about is your journal entry. So this is the net effect on your journal entry. So you are gonna see here that the system is showing all of the accounts with balances that need to be you know, manipulated and everything is flowing in and out of those nine accounts. So those are those accounts that I showed you in, in the chart of accounts that start with nine that relate to opening and closing balances. All right, so here's probably where I'm gonna anticipate your question. Why is the system doing this? I don't honestly know if I have a good answer for this. I have worked with uh, different ERP systems over the years, and I have seen this concept before where the system kind of breaks it into phases and it washes everything through an opening and closing balance account before moving it into retained earnings. That's what SAP is doing. I have also seen the other one where it doesn't bother with that, it just moves it um, directly into retained earnings. Uh, so I don't have, so the system, even though it's income, or sorry, even though it's balance sheet, it's washing all of that stuff into a closing balance account at 1231. And then at 0101, it's gonna put it back on the balance sheet. So ultimately from your balance sheet, there is a net effect of zero when you run your reports, everything reappears on your balance sheet. Ultimately what we care about is that your P&L closes out to your retained earnings. Um, but as part of this job, it's just doing it to those clearing accounts. Okay, so if you're with me so far, I assume everyone is, I don't see any other questions popping up. I'm gonna close this, maybe just to reinforce it before I go back and run my second job. I'm just gonna pop into my general ledger journal entries and we'll just have a look at today's postings and so what we'll see is all of those journal entries. When just try and understand here, you're gonna to have to run like a GL accounts report. Uh, you're not gonna to wanna to look at a journal entry report because you're gonna get a lot of uh, a different journal entries. So one journal entry for each GL account that's been touched. So that job created a ton of entries here. And that's just for my small demo environment that probably doesn't have a lot of activity in it in 2019. So I'm gonna go back to our balance carry forward, periodic tasks. So here's that 2019 job that I ran. It was ran in update mode, not in test mode. 
And I'm going to try, oh, sorry, it's actually not those ones, the one I just did. Here we go. That's my test that I did. And you can see this list gets kind of long once you start dealing with a lot of a lot of companies. So you could try and find the job that you ran and you could then do it again through the copy function. You could also just run it from scratch. So it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, Helmica year end 2019, and this is step two. So I'm also gonna do this, just gonna go for it. I'm gonna choose our Almica company. I'm not gonna target a set of books. And this time I'm moving on to step two. These steps are both mandatory. And the year I'm carrying forward was 2019, and we'll start that one. So now we're seeing a very simplified journal entry. So when you run that step two, now it's moving it out of that closing entry account and it's just moving it into your retained earnings for your current year. So that's the adjustment that we're seeing here. So this is the step that's ultimately getting you to your retained earnings. Um, you don't need to do those all at the same day, um, but just so that you know, this final step is, it does lock things down. So you see there is a reversing entry here. So other accounting systems, SAP Business One, as an example, lets you roll your retained earnings, and then you can continue to do subsequent entries. So you could have some, you know, last minute auditor adjustments, drop those into Business One. Uh, and if you are coming from a Business One background, you probably already know this. So that's kind of a nice feature. You can just actually run retained earnings roll again, and it'll just pick up those Delta entries. That is not how this system works. So this is finalized. Once you've done this entry, you're not going to be able to perform other entries uh, to your financials for the year that you're impacting. However, you can reverse it. So if you do have a situation where you have to book some auditor entries, you can choose the job, you can do the reversal, it'll back out all those entries, you can make your adjustments, and then you can just run this again. So you get to the same effect, you just have to remember that step. Uh, and, and that applies to some other jobs in the system as well. So you may be familiar with that if you're running foreign exchange in the system. Foreign exchange is very kind of picky, right? It has to be the last thing that's done. If you perform your revaluation and then you try and put in, you know, a late journal entry or a late supplier invoice after that, uh, the person who enters it, as soon as they put in a posting date on that period, they're going to get a, a, an error message, a hard stop that says, I can't create this entry because foreign exchange revaluation uh, or remeasurement has already been completed. And if that's the case and the entry is, is uh, on purpose and required, you're gonna need to reverse that foreign exchange, post your entry, rerun it again. Same process for the year end carry forward. Not really a big deal, but just keep that in mind. So, that's really the steps. I mean, once you've completed that, you are going to go into um, one last step. So of course, I showed you about closing. I'm assuming you knowing about closing periods. So obviously you would then close, you know, period 12 of your company. Uh, let me just target my company here. I think I was looking at Almica. I've got lots of set of books here. So I could just filter on my year. You probably noticed in the system, you can't have a closed period with open periods um, preceding it. So you can see all of my 2019 hasn't been closed. So I'm not actually gonna be able to do that for you here. Um, but your last step would be to just close the period, assuming all of your other prior periods have been closed. And then finally, you would go back into your um, set of books and you can go into your fiscal years and your very last step is to close that fiscal year as well. So you've sort of got two gateways there. If you do need to reopen things, you'd have to, you know, once again, that auditor's adjustment, reopen fiscal year, reopen period, reverse entries, do correcting entries, rerun year end, close period, close year. So kind of working back and forth. So overall, I mean, there's not really a lot uh, 
uh, to it. There is that, that little bit confusing two-step job, so be aware of that. So I just want to thank everybody for joining, and uh, that brings us to the conclusion. I will pass it back to Catherine. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. And thank you so much to everyone for attending our webinar today. Uh, please make sure that you join us next week as well uh, for our Q&A Cafe. Again, that's on product development, product engineering, and product designs in SAP Business by Design. With that, I hope everyone has a lovely day. And thanks so much again to Alex for hosting. <music>